So all of the reviews that I've been doing on this channel have all mainly been plug-in reviews, simply because, like I stated before when I did some of my other reviews, I don't have an actual amp head and cab, so I found it pretty easy to start dialing in metal tones using plug-ins, and that just kind of spiraled into me just looking for a better and better plug-in, then looking for free plug-ins, and I got a comment on one of my videos referring to my Blackstar ID Core 10. Now, this particular user thought that I was using an ID Core 40. It is not, it's an ID Core 10. I believe it's the smallest one that you can get of this version. Just happened to be at a guitar center one day and they were throwing out a deal on these red ones, so I picked it up. This was a long time ago. Its main purpose was obviously so I can use it when I travel. You know, it's just small, compact, and easy to use. But that got me thinking, can I use this Black Star to record metal into my digital audio workstation? I kind of wanted to find out. I thought it'd be a fun little experiment. I know that Black Star has the Insider software, which uh, if you guys have any experience with that, it's been a while since it came out, but it's basically a USB plugin. It comes with a software where you can edit and make your own settings and presets for the Black Star, which is really, really cool. It came with some sort of software. I don't know what it was, but it was like, I don't know if it was like Reaper or Logic. It came with something when you originally got it. Obviously, I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be using Cubase like I always have. With a few modifications, I just needed an adapter, obviously, to get that uh, headphone jack size to go into a speaker cable size and put it directly into my audio interface. I decided to start messing with the settings and uh, let me show you guys what kind of tones we came up with with this Black Star. It's actually been really fun messing with it. Right, so here we are on screen with the, uh, with the Insider software which I think is awesome because if you guys look at the top of the ID Core 10 physically, it just basically gives you these presets right here, OD1, OD2, Super Crunch, Crunch, the Clean Bright and the Clean Warm, which all sound good, don't get me wrong, but you don't have this on top of the physical amplifier. You don't actually have an EQ, so the fact that it came with the software is almost necessary, but I'm, you know, I'm glad that they did that. Uh, so I decided to mess with it and Going directly into the DAW did kind of sound like shit at first. It didn't sound very good and it was very dull. It, I couldn't get, a lot of, uh, couldn't get a lot of volume out of it. So what I ended up doing is using the Beast impulse response that I have and also using a power amp plugin to boost the signal. And this is what we ended up coming up with. Now let me turn, okay, that's already off. So here's what it sounds like with just the amp, just the settings the way they are. Right, not bad, not bad. Uh, but uh, I do have the OD, the Maxon OD808 Overdrive, which sounds awesome in front of anything. So let's kick that thing on and see what it does. I think that sounds pretty damn good for being a practice amp, something that's not really meant to be used to record metal guitars. And the fact that it came with, uh, that it comes with that Insider software just makes it so much fun. It's almost like a, it's like a physical plug-in. I, I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but um, now it comes with the USB cable and if you have an ASIO driver or something like that, you can actually record directly from this into your computer without using an, an audio interface. Now I understand that latency is kind of a bitch with that thing, uh, I could have downloaded a better ASIO driver and gotten rid of, I believe, most of the latency, but I didn't want to do that, so I just used the emulated out that's already on top of the amp, ran it into my, uh, 
Universal Audio Aero interface and directly into Cubase, and I just did it that way. Uh, that was just, it was just a problem I didn't feel like dealing with. So uh, that's the way I have it set up. And I'm gonna link in the description the power amp plugin, which is from Ignite Amps, which definitely boosted the shit out of the signal and really thickened it up. And, uh, and yeah, see, the only problem with it though is that I'm using the Maxon uh, OD you know, overdrive on top of it, but once if you don't have one, you can't use a plug-in with it. I know this is basically common sense, but when you guys have your insert section, uh, obviously the, the routing is you know before and after so you can't put anything before this unless you physically put it before the amplifier outside of the uh, outside of your your digital audio workstation if that makes if that makes any sense but uh you, you can add a, like other post effects now it already has it already has really good effects inside of the uh, insider software but you can also add different uh different plug-in effects things like that but it has to be something that would go after the front of the after the amplifier itself you can't put anything before it so yeah all uh, right so if you guys look over here on this thing we have some pretty cool effects we have a reverb delay and modulation now i'm not really big on the reverb or the uh any type of a modulation but i do enjoy a good delay um, i don't like it to be that high up in the level let me put it here that's probably good feedback that's probably good there and yeah, that sounds good. Let's see what that sounds like. Sounds pretty fucking good for a practice amp. So what you guys just heard in that video is all black stars just panned left and right. I did do a little bit of EQing in that, and yes, I realize that at this point I'm recycling riffs, but what can I say, programming drums takes forever, and I didn't feel like doing it for this video, so you probably heard that song before. But if you guys seen some of my other videos, you guys know by now that one thing I really like is free plugins, and of course everybody just likes free stuff, right? But I like to be able to find ways to take things that you may already have, or take things that are kind of inexpensive and use them uh, to do things that most people think you need to spend a lot of money uh, to achieve. A lot of people think that you have to have all these, you need to have a microphone, an XLR cable, a cab, a really good amp head to record good metal guitars, and yeah, we're getting away with some really, really good sounds these days with plugins, but uh, let's say you don't want to use those plugins. Let's say you just have a practice amp and you're dialing in really good tone with that and you want to find a way to use it. People are just going to assume that they can't use that to record good metal guitars, and you absolutely can. 
So, you know, I just wanted to show you guys how you can do that. If you guys have any questions about how I did that and how I routed it into my, into my digital audio workstation, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Uh, but that's it for me on the Black Star today. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.